In the early 1900s, Shoreditch was the slum of London. In the 1960s, it became the working class hub for people around the capital. In the 1980s and 1990s, it became the center for the arts. But now it's got a different reputation, one of expensive coffee and cafes that sell overpriced bowls of cereal. So join us as we see, is Shoreditch still cool? Amongst the amazing street art and the vintage shops in Brick Lane, all seems well. So what exactly is the problem? It's time to introduce you to the concept of today's video, gentrification. What is gentrification? Well, it's the process of renovating and improving a house or district so that it conforms to middle class taste. And there's definitely two parts to this. The first part, there's very little problem with. It's the second part where it gets difficult. Shoreditch is often described as the ground zero for gentrification in London, and there have been five observable stages. Stage one is the neighbouring slum. This is where there's a poor area close to the city centre. This was Shoreditch in the early 1900s, and it provides a catalyst with cheap rent for stage two, where the artists arrive. In this stage, artists are encouraged by the cheap rent, and they come to the area and start exerting their creativity. This kickstarts the process because it starts to improve the quality of life all round. The developing cultural scene will start attracting new people to come to the area. This has been the case for certain areas like Brick Lane from the early 90s, and certain aspects of that continue to this very day. So right now we're in Brick Lane. This is really the heart of Shoreditch now. There's still art everywhere, street art, local businesses. It's a really interesting place to visit. People haven't yet been priced out. And although housing is expensive, it's not ludicrous when compared to the rest of London. So these artists in the area start to attract a new crowd of people that are slightly wealthier but don't price out the existing residents. And it brings us to stage three, where local businesses start to thrive. Taking a look around specific areas like Brick Lane and like Box Park, you can see that this is still the case and an effort has been made to encourage and preserve local businesses. It's really encouraging to see that this is still the case and it means that these areas are still very much cool to come and visit and take a look around. However, it's stage four where things get a little bit more difficult and a little bit controversial. It's the arrival of the hipsters. The definition of a hipster is someone who fetishizes style and a certain aspect of culture, whilst also lacking authenticity. In this scenario, it's someone who loves the grittiness of Shoreditch, but is actually very rich and middle class. And so this is part of the problem, because just down there is Brick Lane, which is really cool. It's arty, it's vibrant, there's street art everywhere and then just two minutes walk away down this side street and suddenly we're in modern suburbs with new build houses, each of which cost over half a million pounds. And that definitely isn't what Shoreditch is known for and it's definitely not cool. Now this is where the negative aspect starts to take hold, as the original people who live there start to get priced out, and the area starts pandering to a middle class, mainly white taste, and loses the authenticity that it once had. But it gets worse, because stage five is when capitalism arrives. Global businesses start realizing that having an office or a shop in Shoreditch now means they can attach an air of coolness to their brand, and they start popping up everywhere, replacing the local businesses and making the area bland and just like the rest of London. None more so than Hoxton Square, where we are right now. This used to be the centre of arts in Shoreditch. Every single one of these buildings has a studio of some sort and has a rich history of providing studio space to creatives so they can do their work. But right now, Aviva, the global insurance chain, owns over half of the buildings in this square. The other half are almost all owned by multinational businesses, chain restaurants, etc. And it's become the exact opposite of what it once was. It's now a hub of capitalism. So it's popular to think that hipsters are the problem, but it's actually the global businesses that move in, price out local residents, and cause the blandness that we now see spreading up across much of Shoreditch, none more so than an old street. Okay, right behind me now is Old Street Roundabout. It is the most expensive place to have an office in London. 
It's dubbed the Silicon Roundabout because of how many tech companies have come here and it's the ultimate state of gentrification. There's no housing, there's no interesting local businesses. All there is is expensive office space and overpriced bars. So the answer to the original question, is Shoreditch still cool? Absolutely, but only certain parts of it. Now let's support our local businesses and hope that capitalism doesn't take over everything.